This is KNS Spring Steel Stock 507. This probably will turn out to be a new project. Alright, I've already started. These little pieces right here are Tamaya pieces. I don't I'm not sure if they still make them. That's what they are. I believe they were for their TLT. Uh, some of their upper lower suspension stay. Like I said, I think they don't manufacture these anymore, so they might be kind of hard to find. The holes. Oh, by the way, this is one eighth wire. The holes. And these are a little bit smaller than one eighth. You can force them through, but it takes a little bit of twisting and forearm workout to get them through. But when you do this, it makes for a very tight, you know, no slop, just a nice tight fit. So I'm going to take this straight piece and going to bend it in a similar U type shape, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to have it go through these two holes right here. Bender set up in a vise right here. But first, I need to measure. Looks like it's about 2 and 7 sixteenths, give or take. So I'm going to go to the halfway point on that, and that will be about 1 and 3 sixteenths or so. But first I'm going to find a halfway point on this piece since I'm using the whole piece. And I believe these are 36 inches long. So I'm going to mark it at 18 with a little cheap magic marker. So now I know that's my midway point. And I want to go what was it, one and three sixteenths on either side of that? Boom. And seven sixteenths. Boom. There about. Don't need to be exact. I usually like to rotate the wire and make the marking all the way around. When you use one of these, um, Practice, 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 practice. I have various marks on here, and the thing I learned about using these benders is you got to know where to place the mark because depending on where you had the wire, you might want to bend it at a certain point, but you might end up making the bend over here or vice versa. Make a couple bends, and after a while, you get kind of good at it. But for this, you don't really have to be that precise anyway because there's always a chance to fix things. That's my model. Because I will screw it up. So I'm just bending it to about 90. I will show a way later on how to check or how to make equal bends. As you can see, it's a little bit past 90. That's no problem because you could actually just you know it's easy enough to have just correct it by hand now do the other side and it's hard to get it to bend on the same plane so a lot of times what I'll do is I mean this is kind of a ghetto method but kind of gets you in the right direction or in the right plane Just put a little bit of pressure on there where it'll stay. And just bend. And see, I'm kind of off the plane there. So you see how the wires could easily cross over. So I just had to give it a little twist. And it's kind of hard to see, but this side is a little bit higher. Than this side, which is a little bit lower. I would like to get that 
that's close so I gotta eyeball it for this demonstration it'll be close enough actually that's pretty good just a little bit off but it still could work sometimes if you find it hard to if you have a new wire you might want to sand it down on the end that could make it easier to slide through the holes and that side goes, goes through fine this side does not all right there's some little bit of sandpaper That cleans it up a little bit. Actually, that's a pretty good burr on there. I might have to get a file to clean it up. There we go. You can see there? Basically, that's how I make my chassis. You might not know what you're looking at but I'll just give you a clue this side will be the front this side will be the back just to show you what I've done so far and I skipped a few things but this is not very uh, complicated at all change the back a little bit there as you can see here these are so I'm gonna pull this apart and show you how simple this is slide that come around this way Just have this. Cool thing about these uh, wheel collars, you don't have to tighten them very much. I mean, they hold solid, very solid. I mean, I can't even pull that out like that. So, very solid. Have these two pieces. I just held on by just three millimeter hex hex screw simple um, this one right here same thing held on by hex head screws uh, these are the ball ball links or the ball fittings that goes inside the rod ends uh, Traxxas rod ends but I have a lot of options here that I will be able to hook up a four link for the rear suspension to the rear axle so um I don't have, this is not one long stud coming through there, the same on this side. This is actually screw, and then I have a three millimeter stud right here, and then another one right here, then the other screw. Then of course just one screw here and one screw there. If you don't know what three millimeter stud, uh, use something like this. I mean, there's many different lengths. I mean, go on Tower Hobby or you're in a local hobby shop and they have some of these, just pick up a few if you think you're going to be using them for projects. But anyway, um, that's that. Just show you what it is. That's that. Okay, one important thing to do is as you can see I just have these pieces and two straight pieces so far so what you want is you want this to be basically the same angle as that you don't want them too off from each other 
I just mocked this up. I can actually tell that this one is a tighter bend than this side already just by looking at it. I mean, you could do it by eye, but this is a little trick I do. This is a scrap piece of aluminum. I take a straight edge like this and hold it against the side like that. Then I'll take a marker. and just draw like that and then so you can see that's like that then you take it you flip it and hold it up and see how far you're off so as you can see I'm go off there so what I'll do is just bend it just a little bit. It will retain the shape. So you see that's closer. And I want to call that close enough. And as long as you have something straight, you can do that. You can do this. That one is kind of close. So in this case, I'm going to open it up a little bit. Just a little. That's good. All right. So that's that. All right. Let's see how fast I can put this back together. I don't have too much time. So there we have that. This is going to be the front. I'm going to have this bowed out like that. And front wheel here, front wheel there, back axle is going to go here. I'm going to cut all of these to to the right length. I mean, this is going to be cut here, here, cut this, cut that. Actually, I have plans for this. I'm going to utilize this. But this is going to be part of the back suspension. That's going to be the springs front suspension. But um, to get the width that I want in the front, when I do that, this back right here bows in. So, and I put stress on on those uh, suspension stays there. So, I have another piece of wire to get extra stability and support and options. I'm going to cut this. So, I cut this. This will go. Oh, I hope this fits. Yeah, I'll be able to work with that. So, anyway, that's it for now. Bonus! Just to give you a clue, the axles that's going on the back, it's going to be something like that.